let's make a proper sided inventory for our block entity. Alright, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the inventory, both insertion as well as extraction of our block entity. Because right now, if you were to take a hopper, for example, and, well, try to put something into this particular block entity, what's going to happen is just going to put this into the first slot or slot with index 0. Just for completion's sake, let's actually take a look at the current way this is working. Then we'll implement something which is going to look absolutely insane to you. I, I can already, I'm already telling you, it's going to look quite crazy. Hopefully I will be able to explain this to you and then we'll see the end result at the end. So let's go into the game and see how it works right now. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft again, and let's just see. So this is, of course, slot 0, this is slot 1, this is slot 2. Now, if I were to, imp you know, do use a hopper, I would, of course, want my raw tanzanite to go into this slot. However, if I were to put this in here, you can see it's just putting this into the first slot. Now, you might say, well, obviously that would be the case because we're putting it on the left side, or, or yeah, on the left side of the block. No, 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 that's not how it works. That is way more complicated. It basically just looks for the first slot and inserts it there. And even worse, right, if we were to, yeah, let's say the tanzanite, I'm like, ah, you know what I want to do is I want the, you know, the finished tanzanite, right, to be output like this. Well, let's just put it in here, and what you'll find is that, well, no, that, that also doesn't work. It's just going to, well, output basically from the first slot, and this is going to be output at the very end. So as you can clearly see, the way that this currently works is absolutely terrible and not at all what we need, especially this is just with hoppers. Imagine with cables or some sort of item transport system from any other mod that would break the system completely. So we're going to have to do something very, very crazy. Hopefully you will be able to understand it, but let's just go back to the code and see how we can basically fix that. So the way that I want this to work is that we will be able to insert into this slot from the left, this slot from the top and the right, end of the block basically and to output for on the bottom as well as output uh, on the south side or the, or the bottom side like not the downside right that's pointing down but like the <laughs> the side that points to the you i hopefully know what you what i mean basically anyway that's the general idea and to do this we actually don't have to do crazy things in terms of methods however the methods themselves are going to look um yeah quite crazy actually like they are gonna look uh, freaking insane so let's just put them like right here we want to get the can insert method override that one as well as the can extract method now, what we'll get in the in both of those methods is the slot that it's trying to insert or extract from to, or to, the stack that it's trying to insert or extract, as well as a side. Now, the side here is really the well main issue, let's say, because the side here is not as you might expect, right? So the direction itself, if I middle mouse one click, I can see down, up, north, south, west, east. You might be like, oh, that's, I mean, that's really easy then you know we can just say north and if, if the slot is this one then we just import it into there and stuff like that. Yeah, sadly, that's not how it works because these directions are world directions, meaning that when we set down the block, whatever face is actually uh, facing north that doesn't matter. The, the, what only matters is that the direction is north. So we can, we're rotating the block around, but that doesn't matter to this direction. And that really is the issue that we have to deal with. Now, I have, I have a solution for this. Once again, this is something where you will have to try this out if you have any type of different way of your own, you know, custom entity over here. You have multiple slots, you have different slots, they are in like different places. You're like, maybe you have two on the left side and you want to import stuff like there. You will have to try this out. And once again, there is some Java knowledge needed for this. Otherwise, you just, you're not going to like understand what to even do. Even with not Java knowledge, you might be like, I don't quite understand this. That's fine. Let's try and explain this. So first of all, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the first two lines here from the can insert method. Now, all of the code is, of course, as always available to you in the description below, GitHub repository, and individual gist as well. And you can see we're first of all going the local direction. What does that mean? Well, basically, I want to get the facing of this particular block, right? Because remember back to the block model tutorial, right, where we actually rotated the block around. This is now where this comes in, right? Because as we rotate the block around, the side changes, right, uh, to in which we basically want to import it into. So we want to keep this in mind. And well, I mean, think about this. So this is the local direction. And then we also just want to return a false on up and down because I don't want anything to be inserted from the down direction as well as the up direction. That's just why I'm doing this. 
And now what I want to do is I'm just going to have a little bit of a comment here, right? So if we're inserting from the top, right? So this would be the north side, quote unquote. Then we want to insert into one. So this one right here. If we are on the right side, then we want to insert into one. Also this guy. And then if we're on the left, we want to insert into zero, which is this one. That should be fairly self-explanatory in that sense. And now I'm going to show you the code that is responsible for, for making this work. And you're going to say, what the frick is this? So it's going to be a return statement, a switch statement, basically. And this is it. Now, the first thing they're going to say is, what is this absolute insanity? Okay, so let me try and break this down for you. Basically, we're going through all of the directions that the local direction can take. This is basically always going to be north because we're already filtering through um, up and down in theory. Actually, this should not be the case. This is also going to return up and down, uh, but it, it shouldn't matter uh, because the only issue that you might get is that when we're taking the side over here and it's not something that can be, you know, opposited or clockwise rotated because obviously up can't really be like rotated clockwise. That, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so keep that in mind. But this should work in theory. This should be fine and uh, it shouldn't have no errors in that moment. Um, but we can take a look at that in anyway. So what happens here? If we are, if the local direction is north, then basically what we're going to take is the side that the world is facing, get the opposite of that. And if that is north, then we can insert into slot one. Now, how did I calculate this? Uh, I got to be honest, I this is more trial and error than anything else. Basically, uh, it, yeah, it, it's pretty much trial and error saying that the side that we're trying to, imp, in, to get from is basically always a site in the world coordinate. So this is the world coordinate site. We're going to get the opposite of that. And if that is north, then we should be at the top of the... Um, this should be the top, basically. Uh, if the local direction is also north, that's very important. This is why we have the switch statement. And if then the slot is one, then we can insert into it. You can also, in theory, because we're also getting the stack here, filter through what you actually want this to be inserted into. So we can say, for example, stack.getItem, and then this has to be mod modItems.raw uh, Tanzanite, for example. But you can also filter what can be inserted into this by doing something like this. Do remember that you will have to do this for each of those lines. Now, once again, in theory, you know, we could probably uh, extract a method over here, make this a little bit simpler to read and all of that. That's fine. I wanted to basically give you this as the full, you know, full like frontal assault in this case, because it is quite crazy. And then let's think about east. So now we're wanting to insert something on the... Well, actually, let's continue with this one first. Sorry. So the default one, right? So once again, this is the north side and then we're inserting into the one exactly like this. Now on the right side, we want to insert into one as well. This is once again, the side opposite that stays the same. If this is east now, now we're on the right side of the block, right? We still want this to be able to insert into slot one. And then once again, side opposite on the north, if the local direction is north, then we're looking for the west side, which would be the left side of the block. And here we can then insert into slot zero. The same thing goes for all the other ones. The only thing that rotates here when the local direction rotates is the side also rotates around, right? So the so the side that we're looking at uh, from the world perspective, we're basically rotating the world around with this and then keeping the direction here. The direction in this case, like that we're trying to do is always the, you know, top, right, left, things like that. That is the general idea here. Hopefully this is somewhat understandable. Once again, I cannot suggest enough playing around with this. Uh, this will open up way more if you try to change this and then see, oh, this is how the behavior changes. This is how the behavior changes. Highly recommend doing it in, um, in debug mode as well and then maybe doing some hot swapping in that instance. Now, interestingly enough, a very similar thing happens in the can extract method. I'm going to just copy over the entire method in this case. And once again, this is all available to you. If the side is up, of course, we're not going to insert anything. If it's down, we don't even have to care about any of the local directions because down is always going to be the same side, no matter how many times we rotate it around the Y axis, of course, right? That should be just fairly sensible. Here, we're just saying, hey, if the slot is then two, we can extract it. And then if it's not down, then we're once again entering the switch statement and doing the same thing. Right, you can see the north one, we're getting the opposite. And then we're looking at south, which is the uh, bottom one, right? not the one that's the down, but the bottom one. And then east as well. So uh, we could, in theory, also export or extract the item from the right. So this would also work. We could, in theory, extract it from the right. Now, that actually doesn't work. It neither works from the right nor the bottom. It only works from the down direction. Uh, because, of course, hoppers only like extract from on top of them, basically. 
Um, but if you were to have, you know, another mod basically installed that adds some sort of conduits or item uh, things that if you can basically, you know, export items out of it, out of something, then extract them, then that would also, it should in theory work. Yeah, so those are the crazy things. As I've said, this looks quite crazy. When you really think about it, it's not that complicated. It's just that you have to get it like once, right? And once you understand roughly what is happening here, then you're going to be like, okay, now I know what's going on. So I highly recommend if you need to watch this again, I probably like encourage you to do so. I also encourage you to just go to the description, get a repository, take the can insert and the can extract method, put it into your own block entity and just play around with it. Um, what I will not do is let's say you're coming out, uh, you're coming over here and you're like, hey, I, so I got like, you know, like six different slots. Listen, you're going to have to figure this out on your own. This is one particular example. Hopefully you can work off of this uh, and hopefully this is understandable. Now let's go into the game and just for sanity's sake, see that it actually works in game as well. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft and let's just try and set the gem infusing station down. Now the first thing right on the left side in theory and we should be able to insert into here. So let's go. This is, of course, the behavior that we had absolutely before. So this is no, you know, nothing crazy. But now from the north side, right, because we set it down, and this is, you know, not really the north side. This is actually pointing to the south. But in theory, it should now insert into here. Let's see if that is the case. And indeed, it is the case exactly how you would expect it to. And that is absolutely awesome. Same thing goes if we are actually trying to get something out. You can see this is no longer pumping out. It is actually outputting the items from the, well, the output slot, basically. And the same thing should happen here. So I believe what we should actually be able to do is insert into the output slot on that side. Let me get rid of this guy. Uh, this is the output slot one, right? Uh, no, actually, it is not. That's also good. Uh, and then the, oh, of course, we can we can export from the output slot there. That That is fair. Um, and then that is pretty much everything. Now, from the top, we actually can't insert anything. Now, it's also not going to crash the game, which is, that's pretty good, <laughs> of course. But yeah, that is pretty much the general idea. So you have one example of a, well, particular um, gem infusing station, one particular block entity. And once again, this is the general idea, right? We set this down into this direction. Now, if we were to rotate 180 degrees, now... This, of course, now, right, this face here becomes the top side now, of course, right? This is no longer the top side. Now, in this instance, in the with this example, uh, I will admit that the example of the block entity, it is definitely not as sided as it could be, but you can always tell that the, this is the right side by looking at this, you know, the little bit of a blacker area right here because it doesn't have this on the left. So then you already know or you always know which one is the right side, hopefully, um, and then that will basically clue you in. And once again, from the top, we can insert right here. That is the general idea. Hopefully this was somewhat understandable to you. So in theory, this should all be compatible with any type of other mod that you might add and that has some sort of item transfer pipes or something like that. As long as they use the, as long as they use the sided inventory interface, then this should in theory all work fine. So that is how you can make sided inventories. Right, but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So, yeah.